Hey, what's going on guys? This is Caucasian Mark here, whitest student on the internet, and we're learning about strings today. Strings are awesome. Uh, let me go ahead and just write one out, and we will see what's going on with them. So we're going to write the data type out, which is string, followed by, let's just say, first name. And we're assigning that value, first name, let's see, with Bob. Now, looking at this, you may think this is kind of strange because with the char, care, data type, I use single quotes here. So what's the difference? What's going on? I don't know. This is kind of strange. We should think of a string as, say, when a reporter quotes you, right? They're going to put everything inside of quotation marks. Um, that's probably the best way I can think of this to differentiate it from, say, numbers or other data types because... Um, a string is not a primitive data type, by the way. That's a very important distinction to make and to know because a string is actually an object. And what an object is, is an instantiation, instantiation of a class, which we'll learn about very, very shortly in the next couple tutorials. But we have to denote the value differently. We use that using these uh, quotations here thusly. So if we wanted to make, say, a string last name, and his last name is the dude, what we could see here is quite interesting because we could have white space in the middle and it's not giving us an error. So if his last name is the dude, that white space actually does count as a character, which is nice to know as well. But what if we wanted to do something else with the string? Say, bank, okay, string, bank account number. And this is just for showing. We can even put a value in there that's numeric, but we're treating it as something incredibly different. And that's kind of the power of strings that we could take um, other data types and we could put them in to a string so they could be treated and you played with um, whatever you want to do with them which is interesting because sometimes we want to look at numbers not in the numeric sense but possibly in their value of the, the word or the phrasing or the sentence they're in or position of something and we might not always want to do arithmetic operations on a number or a digit which is important to keep in mind as well when you're designing a program so we can see that we can store names, we can store words with white spaces. We even come down here and do string sentence. The man who wore no pants got all the dates. We can even store, hold on, forgot the, forgot the uh, semicolon there. We see we can even store full sentences in there. And that's important as well because later we could take, say, string sentence right here and we can end up printing it out to a file, which is cool. So it may be important to keep in mind here as well that sometimes you may want a lot of text being stored inside some of these things depending on what do you want to do with that data, right? So then, is that all you could do with strings? I mean, why is it, you know, a uh, non primitive? It seems like that's all you could do is just store, you know, characters or sentences you can store you know numbers in there in their non numeric sense if that you know holds up at all inside your brain um, we could come down here and let's look at let's take bob up here so once again we're in our system print out move that down everything's going to print out down here which is cool we're going to come up here and we're going to go typing first name cuz that's where we stored bob we're going to hit dot and depending on your IDE, if you're starting in college, they're not probably going to have you start with an IDE that gives you all the hints and possible methods you could do right there. But screw it, this is easy for all of us, and I'll explain what they do. These are all the things you could do to and with the string Bob. Now, some of them may be more helpful than others, depending on what you want to do. So if we go down here, we could go down and say we want to do length. How long is the length Bob? I hate that thing dropping down from the top. So 
So we see Bob is at length of three. Good stuff there. Now what if we wanted to take Bob and say we wanted to, you know what, let's just reuse this here. I'm gonna make some comments up here to make it easier on everybody. Tab that over. Find length. Now if we wanted to make it all uppercase. So we're gonna copy this right here because I'm lazy. Add a semicolon there. And look right here. We could do, make a two an array there, which we have not learned about. But we could do two lowercase. And what does that look like? It takes the first character here and transfers it into this. And you can see that we get all lowercase down there. And we do the all upper, oh, actually that's lowercase. Got ahead of myself there. Good stuff. We, uh, likewise, we do the same for uppercase. So I was going to type it out here, system.out.println. We'll do first name, first name dot two uppercase. Awesome, I did it right there. We can see here that it shifted from being lowercase Bob to all uppercase Bob. And can we do this with this sentence here? Sure, we definitely can. Let's do this again. Actually, we'll just copy this. Come down here. And we're gonna take sentence, come on up. And we can see that everything's uppercased. Now, obviously the exclamation points won't change Likewise, there's no uppercase and lowercase numbers, so that will stay the same. There's no corresponding one to the other, just you know, is of itself the, the final representation of that digit. But we can see we could take you know, our English text here and manipulate between upper and lower case. And this is important because you may want to have some kind of data check for a, a password or a login name. And you may want someone to write in their information, but then when you get it, you may have to translate it to all uppercase or all lowercase. So that way, you're not gonna have Bob with a, you know, you want Bob to be a distinct name in and of itself. If someone use an uppercase B, or an uppercase B for the second B, right? Um, and when you're reading it in, you may want it to be all uppercase or all lowercase for readability and uniqueness for all the users in your database. Now, if that's way ahead of you, or over your head or whatnot, fine. But there are definite reasons to have stuff be all upper and all lowercase, especially when you're trying to check for something. Because after all, an uppercase U and a lowercase U or O or A are definite and different characters. And the compiler will read them differently as such. So let's go into, let's find something else fun to do with these strings. Let's uh, use last name, why not? And let's do contains. This is asking, does it contain? Last name contains, and what does it contain? Um, let's see, does it contain a Z? Can't do it like that does it do it like that because it is a string. So we have to have this value in here in the double quotes. Earlier I can't do single quotes or just the Z itself because they'll give me an error. False. So we go to last name up here, the dude does not contain a Z. But what if I want to see if it has a space in there? Can I do that? True. Because even though there's nothing here, it looks like you're searching for nothing. You are in fact searching for white space, which exists in the string. Pretty cool, huh? Well, if you want to search for part, the du for say dude in the last name. True, it is there because capital D is followed by lowercase u and that's pretty cool. 
So my suggestion is, is that you get an IDE like JetBrains, uh, Eclipse, uh, NetBeans, a more, I'd say, advanced one, and you could use your, uh, what this is called is a dot operator right here. And you can make a string like I have been. You just type down first name dot. You have all of these characters down here, or not characters, but all these methods down here to work with. And you can play around with them and see what they do and see how to manipulate your string. But as far as the basics go, that's just letting you know what strings are, um, how we use them, how we declare them, and some methods that we could do on them, and what kind of the formation uh, or how uh, the syntax looks when we're creating a string that has a method. Well, this has been Caucasian Mark. Like, share, subscribe, contribute, leave some comments if you have questions. I can always expand any of these tutorials to cover any more topics that you so desire, and I'll see you in the next video.